What's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to enhance the mood of a photo in Lightroom. Sometimes a scene looks really good in person, but when it comes out of the camera, it doesn't have as much mood as it did in real life. This tutorial will show you how to add some of that back in in post-production so the final image looks more like it did in real life. We add new videos and resources every week, so make sure you hit subscribe and follow us on social media using the links in the description. Also visit newlayer.com and sign up for the email list for special offers that are for subscribers only. Let's get started. So here's the before and here's the after, and I'm gonna take you through my workflow and the order that I did things to this photo to reintroduce some of the mood that I saw when I took it. New Layer members can download this photo in the project files at newlayer.com, but you can apply what you learn in this tutorial to any image that you have. So this is just a JPEG that I took with my phone, but I thought it would be a good example of how you can enhance photos that you take spur of the moment. So I took this picture in the early morning and the light was hitting the building from a really good angle, but thanks to the processing of my phone, the white balance is off, it's too bright, and it, it just looks a lot newer and cleaner than it actually was. So I'm gonna go back to my before image and hide these thumbnails. And the first thing that I wanna do is set the exposure to roughly how I remember seeing it in person. So I'm gonna take the exposure down quite a bit. This was taken in the early morning, so it wasn't very bright. So about negative 1.79. And then I'm gonna bring back some of the details in the highlights and the shadows. So I'm gonna take the highlight slider down, and that will darken only the very brightest parts of our image. So about negative 45 is good. And then I'll increase the shadows to about 65. So that just brings back some of the extra detail and gives us more image data to work with. Now I wanna increase the contrast. So I'm gonna come down to the white slider and increase that. Somewhere around 50 is good. And then I'm gonna decrease the blacks. So around negative 50. Next, I'll increase the local contrast and the clarity in the presence section. So I'm gonna increase the texture a good amount to about 35 and increase the clarity to about 65. So that gives us a much grungier, grittier, natural look. I'm also gonna increase the dehaze slider and that's gonna boost our contrast even more. And lastly, the colors weren't as bright as they are in this photo, so I'm gonna decrease the saturation to about negative 25. Next, I'm gonna come into the HSL tab. And when you take photos that have trees and leaves in them, a lot of times the green is just way too green and way too bright. And I also wanna take some focus away from the blue wheelbarrow as well as enhance the color of the wood to give a more natural, kind of hidden in the forest look. So first, I'm gonna fix the leaves. So I'm gonna take the green hue and shift it a little bit towards yellow. So now they're not quite as strong of a green color and they're a little bit more yellow. And then I'm gonna come down to the saturation and take the green down to about negative 40. And that's just gonna take some of the color out of those leaves. Lastly, I'll come down to the luminance area and adjust the green to negative 25 or so. And that's also gonna darken just the things that are green. In our case, that's mostly the leaves. Now to adjust the wheelbarrow, I'm gonna come up to the saturation of the blue, and I'm gonna take that way down to about negative 85. And then I'm gonna to come to the blue luminance and take that down to about negative 40. And that just darkens and desaturates only things that are blue. So again, in this case, it's just the wheelbarrow. Next, I'm gonna enhance some of the wood color. So I'm gonna come into the saturation, and brown is made up of reds, oranges, and yellows. So I'm gonna increase the red saturation a little bit, maybe plus 10. The orange, which is the main part of brown, I'll increase a little bit more to about 35. And I'll do the same with the yellow to about 35 as well. So if I close that panel and come down into the split toning panel, I'm gonna use this to add some blue to the shadows and more orange to the highlights and the midtones. So under the highlights, I'm gonna increase the saturation to 100 so we can see the color better and I'm gonna adjust the hue until I get a nice orange color. So around 45, and then I'll decrease the saturation. And I want this to be pretty subtle, so I'm gonna take it all the way down to about 10. Next, I'll go to the shadows and increase the saturation there to 100, and then I'll change the hue to a nice blue color. So around 205, it's a little teal, but I think that suits this image. And then I'll take the saturation down from 100 to about 25. Then I can use this balance slider to tell Lightroom what to consider shadows and what to consider highlights. And that way it'll put more or less orange or blue into certain areas of the image. 
So I'll increase that to add more orange to my image, around 50. So it still adds a nice amount of blue to the darker parts of the image, but keeps a nice orange glow in the midtones and the highlights. Next, I'll come into the effects panel, and I'm gonna add a vignette. So I'm gonna take the amount slider down to about negative 40, and I want the vignette reaching farther into the center of the image, so I'm gonna take the midpoint down to about 35. Next, I'll come up to the tone curve panel, and I'm gonna give my curve a slight S-curve shape. So I'll click here and here, and I'm only gonna edit the top right and the bottom left points. So I made these points, that way all the midtones remain the same. So I'm gonna bring up the shadows a little bit, and I'm gonna bring down the highlights. So you can see that kind of gives our image a nice faded effect. Now the last thing that I'm gonna do is add a lot more warmth back into this image because the morning was nice and orange looking. Usually a sunset or a sunrise is pretty orange, so simply increasing the temperature is a good way to get that across. So I'll come back to my basic panel, and I'm gonna change the temperature and increase that. So somewhere around 21 looks pretty good. And since it's in the forest and there's a lot of green cast from all the trees, I'm gonna bring the tint down just a little bit towards the green, about negative seven. So one more thing that I find distracting is this yellow rake handle. So I'm gonna to click to zoom in on that and I'm gonna come over to my adjustment brush tool and I'm gonna reset all of the settings to zero. And then I'm gonna paint just on this handle. So I'll press the left and right bracket keys to resize my brush and just paint right on the handle. And I'll get some of this area too, since that's yellow. And then I'm just gonna decrease the saturation to about negative 60, and maybe bring the exposure down to about negative 1.5. So if I click out of my adjustment brush and zoom back out, that yellow handle is just slightly less bright and it doesn't pop out as much. So again, here's the before and the after. That's it for now guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure you hit subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Tell me what you wanna learn next in the comments because we create new content based on your feedback. I'm JT Shaver for New Layer. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.